the one today, it's InDesign. It's, it's back there, your look. I promise, right up there. Um, <laughs> we are going to make a quick layout. Um, InDesign is a, is a layout um, uh, application. Um, and it's really made for large uh, books, but we're going to just use it for a one-page um, document. Um, but later on in your career, you might use it for posters, um, like I said, books, any multi-page document is where it really um, excels. So uh, keep that in mind. We're just sort of scratching the surface here. This is the second part of your first project. So you've made your Photoshop um, hybrid. And now this part of it should explain to me um, your process, you know, the images that you used, your final resolve, the title of it, and your concept. Um, please read carefully what you need to include because those are givens. Think of me as your art director saying you need to include the stuff. Um, but you can add more to it if you feel that it actually <coughs> um, helps illuminate the process better. Um, okay, so. Uh, the first thing we would do is actually before we even open a new document, I want to show you where we're at on the desktop. I have a folder that has all my images in it that I used. So um, there's the, I used that biohazard sticker from that boat. There's me on the skate ramp. There's a floor texture I used. There's um, the final image, which you need to include. There's a hawk. There's Quinn. Texture. Actually, I didn't end up using that texture, so I'm going to not place that. Um, a sky, which I thought about using, but I didn't, um, and my landscape, which I did use. So some of those I can uh, ignore. Um, so I really had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my final piece and six images that I, that I used to make my hybrid and my composition. Um, so that's good. That's manageable. All right, so let's jump in here to InDesign. We'll close this one. It will start out with a screen that looks like this, um, and we'll do File New, New Document. Okay, some very important things here. First of all, 11 by 17, it's required that you print out a tabloid. Um, you can orient it however you want. You know what? I'm going to do, since I have a horizontal image, I just know it'll be easier to design um, a vertical. I'll make it look like a poster. Um, don't click the facing pages. We don't have a multi-page document. This is important if you have a, um, you know, if you have a left and right page because they would have different um, gutters. Probably, um, you know, where the binding is in the middle, it's going to affect your left and right pages differently. So, um, facing pages would be important in that context, but not here. So, just don't check it. It would make it easier. Um, although it's not a big deal. Uh, columns. You can set up columns now, but I probably just leave that at one. And I did set my margins to one inch. Okay, because um, those are kind of typical, but if you want to make them a little bit smaller than that, that's certainly fine. But you won't be able to bleed stuff and print in our lab um, because the um, unless you print on larger paper and then cut it down by hand, you can't do a bleed where you actually go all the way to the edge or over the edge, actually. Okay, so there we are. There's our vertical 11 by 17 inch document. Um, the zero, 00 point is up here in the upper left. If I want to reset that, I can just drag this uh, cursor somewhere, but I don't, so I'm going to stick them back there. Um, the purple lines are my one inch margins, and I'm ready to go. So with everything in here, these menus are again contextual, or these uh, this toolbar options up here are, are contextual, they change based on the tool. <coughs> um, there's, you know, basically you, you recognize probably a lot of these things from uh, Photoshop, like a pencil, and um, the new thing that we'll start with actually um, in InDesign is this frame tool. And by default, you'd see the rectangle. Like, like Photoshop, you can click and pull down and you'll see other tools under there that are all um, similar. So we're gonna start with the rectangle and um, one important thing that you wanna think about is like having a grid or some sort of structure. So I would count the number of images you had. We had six small things I'm gonna put in the small images and one large one, which is the final piece. And I'm going to just go ahead and start with the final piece and take my frame tool, my rectangular frame tool, which is F on the keyboard, and go ahead and go file and place. And this is how you get all your images into these uh, frames. And go to my Hawk Dad's Gate final. Those are all JPEGs. Um, you can use TIFFs, JPEGs. I could even insert a PSD if I wasn't quite finished, but I wanted to work on my layout. I could go ahead and put my PSD in 
and then it would automatically update with my, if I kept saving the PSD with the same name, my layout would update with a new PSD as I worked on it in Photoshop, which is kind of cool. All right, so there we go. Now here's some things to understand. So the first thing, now that we have an image, when I roll over that image, you can see that a little disk appears. What does that mean? Well, the way that these frames work is the frame and, you know what, I'm gonna put a big fat border on this so you can tell what the frame is. Even bigger than that. This is gonna be super ugly. Oh my gosh, that's so ugly. <laughs> that's the frame. The picture and the frame move together if I click outside of this disk. If I click on the disk, I can actually move that picture with inside that. Now you might be thinking, well, why would you want to do that? Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, the reason I would want to do that is, let's say I want to use this frame as like a cropping device. If I click on the center image, these items up here refer to the size of the content, which is the picture of me and Quinn, my final piece. And if I say, you know what? I want this thing to be bigger. Like I want it, instead of being 57% right now, let's say I want it to be um, 90%. Well, let's just put it at 100% of its size. That's the whole picture. You can see it extends out off my page and everything. And then I could even, since that's selected, move that thing around inside of that to like, maybe I just want to show a detail, which is cool. Now, sometimes these images will come within your inside your frame and, okay, I'm gonna turn off the um, border. So I'm gonna click just on outside of this box. I deselected by clicking out here and then click on it again. So I just got the options for the frame itself, but just because I wanna turn this off. I'm gonna set it to one. Okay, so I do have a frame, this is very small. I'm gonna move this back over so it's centered. <clears throat> okay, let's say I want this to fit um, in there. Well, I can um, control click in this box, um, or I can actually control click on the little uh, thing in the, the little disc in the center and say fitting, um, fit content to frame if I want to. Um, that way I can, you know, give my frame a certain size up here, in this case it's 9 by 5 <coughs> and it will fit in there. Um, there's all kinds of options you probably noticed in there under fitting. I could um, fill frame proportionally so it would not mess up my proportions. Um, um, you could do the center content, in this case it doesn't matter because this content and the frame are the same. Uh, all kinds of options, and you can also find those under Object. Okay, so you can right-click or you can go to Object Fitting. Those are all super important. And if they don't make any sense, just try them out. You can always undo. Okay, we have our first thing. <laughs> now this might be a time where we think about um, some sort of grid. Um, I have six images, so that makes it actually pretty easy. Um, because I can count up, well, I got 11 inches, but two minus two, that's nine. I have a nine inch space here. Um, if I have each one be two, that's two, four, six inches. That could give me like a nice one inch gutter between them. That's pretty extreme. Let's do, let's say like two and a half. So we'll start, we'll drop a guide there and then we'll go to four and a half. Wait, that's five, four and a half. I'm gonna blow this up. I draw my guides. <clears throat> Four and a half. And then, did I say a half inch? A quarter inch would look better. We can move these all together as a block if we want to. Oh man, I already lost track of what my things were. Is that even that big? That's awful big for my thumbnails. You know what I'm going to do? I'm changing my mind of how I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to select both these things. I'm just going to hit delete and they'll go away. I just drew a big wide um, marquee around them and I deleted them. And I'm going to move this down here to the bottom, closer to the bottom. And I'm just going to make one big column right here. I'm going to blow this up so I can see how big this is. And in fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop, one way you can put these frames on is just click once 
and then just tell it I want a two by two inch box. All right, so I just click down once, and the reason I did that is because it's going to be easier for me to draw my guides this way. If I already have one of the, I'm going to select this guy and hit delete. All right, I'm going to stack all these, um, all my pictures up in this one area. <clears throat> I'm going to have a column of type right here, with that, which has my um, explanation in, and I'm maybe I'll move it all up and put the title down here at the bottom like a movie poster, which is totally fine. As long as it's big and large, that'll work fine. Um, this is where a little drawing on paper would be great, just a tiny little thing. So let's put another object in there. So it's selected, I can say file, place, and I'll do my, um, let's do dad. All right, so it'll try to fill that um, proportionally one way, and I actually can decide here how I want this to happen. I don't need to use the whole, for this project, this layout, I don't need to use the whole thing. That is totally enough for me to communicate the idea that I'm standing on a skate, skate ramp. Um, and then I can start to do some things with this, like I can say, you know what, I want to want to border on this guy too. And then let's add some text. So we'll take our text tool, type tool, and I'll put a box down here. I'm going to go from, I'm going to blow this up. It's Command Plus, just like in um, Photoshop, by the way, to zoom in. And of course, there's also a zoom tool down here, like just like in Photoshop. And there's some things. You should read the assignment because it tells you exactly what you have to include in the layout. Though, like I said, you can include more. So I need to include the title. I'm going to call this um, Dad. And I can use a comma, but that's kind of typical. I'm going to use this bar thing up here on the keyboard. And I'm going to say this is a digital photo. And I shot this in 2002. You don't have to use the exact date and some type of space and other ones. And then, you know what? What is this? This is Minion Pro as default. I'm not going to do that. First of all, I don't need a 12 point either. Something more like nine point would probably be better. Um, but we'll wait till we pick out the type. <coughs> I wanted um, myriad for this. So I'll do myriad because um, there's a nice condensed version if I want to use it. I use this a lot for all my stuff. So it's sort of my font for things like this. My display font will be more more crazy. Okay, so and then I want to um, I'm gonna put it over on the right edge, and because it's a title, maybe I'll use um, italic for that, and just to sort of offset this a little bit and start creating a pattern, I'm gonna tint the digital photo to like a gray. So where there's this type color, I can just say you know what, let's just do fifty percent. We could also there's also you can mix up colors here and add colors. It's not a big deal. There's a little drop down here, so you can do um, uh, swatches, tint swatches, and things like that, um, and add colors here. So there is that little uh, hamburger icon to work with. All right. So I've got that box formatted, and that's going to help me quite a bit because I've sort of made like a little template for how I want everything to look. I mean, I want the rest of them to be formatted the same way. So what I would probably do at this step is just draw a marquee around all those elements, not the bottom part, but these, this and the text box, and then option drag it. And you, when I option drag it, you see when I have the cursor over it, it gives me, let me blow this up again. It gives me the um, icon, just like in Photoshop, with um, a dark arrow and a light arrow. That means copy. So when I drag it, it'll copy the whole thing. Now you're like, well, I only need two of those, and you would be correct, but we're going to replace um, everything first. The, the idea was I'd keep the formatting, although now I've decided uh, I need to move these up a little bit closer to the picture because I have too much of a gap. So I selected them both and I'm moving them both at the same time since I want to be consistent. Okay, so what do I do here? I'm going to put a different picture in there, so I'm going to click on that little um, disk. I'm going to say File, Place, and just go for, with my next Floor Texture. Pop that in there, 
and I can size that and rescale it if I want. Obviously, this is also a digital photograph from 2000, 2002. Good job, that's <laughs> dyslexia. 2020. Um, it's not my floor. It's not called Dad. I'm gonna call this garage floor. <clears throat> I can title it whatever I want. Notice it's got the formatting from before. I don't have to go and make this tinted again, and I don't have to make this italic. Um, so my consistency is right there. So cool. So that's how I would do all of that, and then I would, you know, go ahead and put my. Um, my uh, gutter in there, my margin, and go ahead and drop in some type. I would wait till all these are put, it looks like it can fit three in here and three in here. I might have to do a fourth one, <clears throat> but we'll figure that out. You know, the great thing about this program is you can, you can also group these things together, by the way. Like if I wanted, I could take this whole block and go um, object and group. Command G, and then all I got to do is click on one piece, and the whole box moves, and all of the other piece moves with it. So now that it's grouped, I can do that. I can also go and ungroup it later on if I want. So you know, moving all this stuff around and changing our layout is super easy. It's only a single page that you guys are doing, um, but let's put some type in here, and um, also two inches. So we can put our little type thing in there and I'll just draw a box like this. And I'm gonna insert for now, because you guys don't wanna see how slow I type, <laughs> some placeholder text. And do some, um, so first of all, I don't wanna switch types. I'm gonna use the same type I used before, Myriad Pro, but maybe I could use condensed this time. I am gonna use a slightly bigger um, version of this. Maybe let's do like 10 and we'll increase, so one way to make it look more professional and easier to read is increase the letting, which is the second thing. If you forget what that is, just hover over it and I'll tell you, letting is super important. Uh, if you've ever had a teacher tell you to submit your um, paper double type, double spaced, that's from the old days with typewriters where you would literally make two spaces. Um, you know, you'd hit the return thing on the typewriter carriage twice, so you'd have an extra blank line between them. And that just made it, makes it easier to read if your teacher was going to read 30 pages of papers with 10 pages each. <clears throat> That's a lot of reading. They don't want to like be hurting their eyes. So letting is something that professional um, uh, typesetters use a lot um, and just professional designers use a lot. In fact, when they talk about type, they talk about the, the type size and the letting. So those numbers are usually given like the type would be like 1020. <clears throat> Very important. Now notice that when I did that, I got this little plus here. That means all my type is not fitting. So if I had, you know, created this great description of what my project was about, um, I'll move this off here just for a second and draw another uh, another box. <clears throat> Let's say I have two columns type. I'm gonna have to draw another margin. Okay, there we go. So and they'd probably be about the same size for what you know. Do this, and then we'll take them and put both down here aligned with that. All right, alignment, very important. Okay, so that little um, box here, there's a red plus. That means all my type's not fitting there. And let's say I'm pretty committed to basically this size type, because um, scale-wise, it works really good in proportion with everything else on my page. So what do I do? Well, you can actually click on this text and then click on this box and it'll show you a little icon of all your type. And then you can click in another box, and what that does is it automatically flows to that next box. Um, and you can see this in, 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 watch this. So if you click twice, you'll get a word, by the way. If you click three times, you'll get um, a line. If you click four times, you'll get a paragraph, paragraph, paragraph. And if you click five times, you get everything. So we're gonna click five times to get everything, or we could have just done select all in that box. Um, but it's good to know that handy little thing. Um, and let's change this uh, 
letting a little bit more. So notice, or maybe even change the font size, something more. As this box has less room for the type, it just automatically flows into this next box. And that's super awesome because if you've done a 100 page manuscript and your editor says, oh look, I forgot to give you this paragraph that goes on page two, you don't want to have to reformat those next 98 pages. It'll happen automatically if they're all linked together like this. Okay, so I actually do like the 10 point type and the um, 20 point here. So probably what I would do, because that looks really horrible, it's like an orphan or a widow. Um, you can debate designers all day long and they all have different descriptions of what that is. <laughs> You can check and go on and Google it too. Um, <clears throat> which one's an orphan and which one's a widow? Either way, it looks bad up there. So we're going to go ahead and um, make that go away. And there's other options we have up here in our toolbar. So for example, we could just go and decrease, um, we could just go smaller and smaller, the horizontal scale of our type. And just a small decrease there allows that last line to sort of pop into place down here. And I can, I have more room for everything else. That shouldn't, you know, sometimes it does make you be a little cleaner with your writing, and that can be a good thing. Sometimes people are unnecessarily verbose. But, okay, so I've got four more pictures to put in here. And most importantly, I need to put my title and probably give myself some credit. But let's do a title real quick. <clears throat> um, I'm going to call this Hawk Dad. Use it all caps just because. So I wrote Hawk Dad and I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to try 212 and see how that, that's too much. <clears throat> let's try 150. Ooh, first of all, we're going to change that type because that's Minion again. And I wanted to do Arial Black. See what I need to get it in there. Oh my gosh, come on, there we go. That's exactly what I want. 112, <clears throat> okay. I should probably, with something this, this big, do a little bit of kerning, um, which is the space between the letters. Like this hawk, this A looks like it's got a lot of space because it's next to a W. See all this room in here? So all I need to do is put my cursor in here and if I hold down the option key and use the little letters on my keyboard, it'll decrease that space. All right, that looks better. I can hide all these cards and columns too under the view menu. There's hide extras, there's hide guides. There's all these hiding things that you can do under the view menu. And that'll make it easier to see if I need to. I can actually now, now that I have the kerning, I'm going to make it a wee bit bigger so that I can use all, oops, it's okay, I'm going to just make it here bigger here. All right, so I can center this visually. All right, and you know what? Remember what I did with my type? I went black, gray, black. I want to do that here. I'm going to take my tint and put it like around 50%. Okay. You could, so don't, you can also, if you want to rotate your type, you certainly can. Um, if you hold down shift, it'll constrain it. <clears throat> Maybe I want to do something cool with like another column of type. That's certainly possible. Um, don't stack your type. That's pretty awful most of the time. Like, you know, have the word hawk, like one letter on a row. But you can rotate it 90 degrees, and you've probably seen a lot of posters that have done that. Um, especially if it's super big. Like, you know, maybe I want to decide, I could decide, I want this whole word to take up this whole side here and then have everything else right here and have this really um, huge use of scale and proportion and really scream my title. That might work. Obviously, this image has to be smaller, <clears throat> you know, because that would look bad. I can't put black type over a black area like that and have it work out well. But I could shrink this down some, um, make this type bigger, can do all that stuff. <clears throat> all right, let's see here. 
I'm going to go back to the top there. I but did a bunch of undos there. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and save this. And then I can get the rest of the objects in there and play with it some more. But I'm I need to put it, I'm gonna put a title here and also put my name under it. That would be a plus. Um, but most important, the probably the most time-saving um, maneuver I did this whole time was just once you get one of these formatted just like you want, copy and paste it. Or just drag it, option drag it, remember. But copy and paste works as well. <clears throat> um, and if you group it first, you're gonna co copy and paste it as a unit. Um, just make sure that that keeps you consistent. So all these have borders, they all use the same type, they all use the same formatting, there's no weirdness. Um, I've only used two fonts for this whole thing, so yay. <clears throat> okay, save. Save as. We want to save our InDesign layout, so I'll call it like um, Murphy Project 1 Layout. I'm gonna save it in the same folder I had all my pictures and keep that whole, I'll move that whole thing as a block. Do not give me your InDesign layout, that file. It won't, it, if you don't send it with all the pictures, it won't show me anything very, very, in a very good way. It'll show like little crappy versions of the pictures. All right, so don't send that InDesign file to me. What you want to do is, is send me a PDF, just like it says on Canvas. So you gotta make a PDF. You probably noticed under Save As, there was no PDF option. So use File, Export. And Adobe PDF Print probably is the default, but just make sure it says Adobe PDF Print. It'll have a PDF extension and call it Murphy Project. <coughs> One layout, something with your name in it. Say Save. <coughs> And you will get um, a bunch of options which you can just say, okay, export. They're, they're all fine. If you just double check this says high quality print, then all the options are totally acceptable. Either one of these is good. It'll tell you in that little thing what they are, but um, they're all, they'll all be fine. You'll see it, just, just look at it when you're done. It should open it automatically if you have this view PDF after exporting box checked which I will, so that you guys can see how it looks. Not only is this PDF required, it's also easier to print the PDF, just because there are fewer, um, well, first of all, it lets you see it automatically without the grids and guide. <coughs> um, you don't need to send the user the fonts that you used, unlike in InDesign. If you send your InDesign file to the printer, you need to include fonts, all the pictures, etc. PDF is a standalone document. Um, <coughs> And it's you know wonderful that way. You can you can view it on the web with different you know, stuff. So print from here, and you'll be fine. And submit this PDF for your layout, not the InDesign file. Okay, <clears throat> obviously it's not done, um, but it's it's good to take a little um, export sample and just see how it's looking as you go. <clears throat> All right, one last thing I want to show you. Um, in InDesign is that there are a whole bunch of, so you can play around in this and it's totally fine. There's <coughs> different um, frame tools like ellipses. If I hold down shift, I'll get a perfect circle. I can place something in there. <coughs> place, Jeff. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is going. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure what I did there. Did I draw? So, oh, I did something weird. I'm gonna just back up a little bit here. Okay, I'm not sure what I did there. Uh, but just to undo if something weird happens. So <clears throat> place, let's do the hawk and put it in there. So um, I'm gonna move the hawk a little bit within my frame. I can still do things like put a, 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 a border around this if I want to. In this case, it would be a round border. Um, this would look really horrible with my squares. It doesn't make any sense. This one would, I mean, obviously the hawk is important, so but it definitely will get more attention. Um, 
Perhaps a better way to do that, I could make all of these circular, circular, and I, that, that would be fine. I mean, it would still communicate. I could have me in a circle, I could have the texture in a circle, the sky in a circle. Only thing that would look a little weird is the landscape, but I could make it work. Um, and have them all like drop like little balls down to this. Don't put this one in the circle, that might be hard. But I could round the edges or something a little bit to go with the idea. Um, I just wanted you to know that was there. Okay, there's also line tools and basic drawing tools and things like that in here, <clears throat> should you need to add anything like that. Okay, now I'm definitely done. I'll pin out, pin out the PDF and show you how to print in class. And if you have any questions, just email me. Okay, thank you. Let's stop this thing.